All right, Shalom. First, I want to give all praises unto Yahweh, Basham Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the Apostle and Elders of Great Moonstone. And I want to say Yahweh, Basham Yahweh Shai, Basham Rakar Kadash, Brakatha to the elect. Um, just wanted to get into this topic, man. You know, um, a lot of Christians would like to bring out the scripture, John 3 16. Okay, but they don't really understand the, the depths and the understanding of what the scripture is talking about. So, what I'm going to hopefully do in this lesson is to go into the words and the word world because there's um, three major uses in the Greek for the, wor uh, for the um, word world in the English. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today, uh, Lord willing, man. So I'm just going to get into it. This is uh, John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life okay so a lot of christians like to bring out the scripture trying to basically um disprove what we teach which is that the only the israelites will be saved okay salvation is only for the israelites not for the other nations on the earth okay so we go into the interlinear this is a a tool called blue letter and um you know it can be used to go into words sometimes it goes off so you got to do your research uh, so I'm just going to go into it now, man. So the first world, world that we're going to be dealing with is cosmos, okay? So that's G2889. Okay. Strong's G2889, cosmos, cosmos. Okay, now it says in the outline of the biblical usage, right? Now it gives it quite a lot, so that's why you got to know what you're, what you're doing and you got to filter it through the scriptures. It says... <laughs> An apt and harmonious arrangement or constitution, order or government. So this is talking about an organized uh, group of particulars. Okay, now if we go into, we go back, right? Let's go to, uh, so let's go back into, how do we go? Yeah, there we go. So if we get another scripture to go into this, now this is First John chapter 4, verse 9. Right, so it says, In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Okay, so now it's pretty much saying a similar thing again. If you go into the interlinear, right, it says, So the word God there is Theos. Now, what it is in the Hebrew is it's Yahweh. Okay. That's what it goes back to, because you have you have Allah Hayyam, which is powers, you know, and you um, and you've got Yahweh, okay, which is usually translated as <coughs> Lord in capitals in the King James Bible, okay. So, so who sent his son? Yahweh sent his son Yahweh Shai, okay, which is ignorantly called Jesus Christ, to come into what come into the world to save who? And that's what we're going to get into, man. It says. So it said. In this was manifested the love of, um, you know, God. I'm just going to read it how it's written. Toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. So we're going to live through that salvation. Okay. Now, uh, what does that mean? Let's go into uh, another scripture to, to, to really round up that point, man, to get that understanding. Okay. So we've established that um, the Lord sent his son so that we might live through him. Okay, like who, and, that's, and I was talking to the cosmos. Now, who's this cosmos? Who's this uh, arrangement? Who's this order, this arrangement, of this government, this group of particulars that it's talking about? Okay, who did, who did the Lord send his son for? Okay, now, this is Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son. That's talking about Mary. And doubt, and by the way, uh, that was not immaculate conception. You know, Joseph had sex with Mary. Okay, they were they got you know they were married and that, that's how Yahweh Shai came into the world, right? And says, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Now, why it's so important to go into words is because obviously we know that the Lord's name is not Jesus because the letter J only came about since about the fourteen hundreds, okay? So that's just the translated the transliteration of the name. Now the actual name in the Lashawan Kadash, which is the ancient tongue, okay, the ancient Hebrew tongue. Okay, which is uh, called by scholars in this world as Proto Canaanite. That is, uh, the name is Yahweh Shai. That's the proper pronunciation of the name. 
right? So that should be Yahweh Shai there. So I'm going to read it again. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai, for he shall save his people from their sins. Okay? Uh, and so who's Yahweh Shai's people, man? Let's go into. Is it this? Let me just remember if it's. Hebrews 7 and 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood, because the priests were Levites. Now Judah is one of the is the head tribe of the twelve tribes of Israel, okay. And uh, the Lord sprang out of Judah. That means that he came from the line of Judah. And if you look at his line in Matthew one and one, going back through Joseph all the way, it goes back to the man called Judah, who's a son of Israel, okay. So who is he coming to save? He's coming to save his people from their sins, okay. And that's talking about the Israelites. Okay, and just one more scripture quickly to round up that, round that up, man. Just I need to just be clear um, for those of you watching that you know never come across this before, you know never heard this before, you know never heard the truth, um, and and you know believing man through the spirit of Yahweh Shmi Shai. This is Luke chapter one verse sixty eight. Blessed be the Lord Power, that's Yahweh, right of Israel, for He have visited and redeemed redeemed. His people, so we're the Lord's people, man. Okay, now in the next chapter, just across Luke chapter 2, okay, it says Luke chapter 2, verse 1. And so, we've got the understanding now on cosmos, okay, so we know what that scripture is pertaining to. And just so there's no because you might get confused, you might come across the word world in the scriptures and then get confused. Now, I'm gonna go into this, that's why it's important to go into words, okay. Now Luke chapter 2 verse 1 And it came to pass in those days That there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus Okay Which was a um, was a Roman emperor man He was a Caesar That all the world should be taxed Okay Right So we're going to go into that word world there And let's just see if it says cosmos Let's see if it says cosmos Okay It shouldn't Yep there we go So it says Icumeni Okay Strong G 3625 Oikumene. Mm -hmm. Oikumene. That's right, man. It says the inhabited earth. Okay? The Roman Empire, all the subjects of the empire, the whole inhabited earth, the world. Now, whenever this word is used, it's, it's referring to the known world that, you know, basically everyone, the lands and everything that's in, in, included in, inside that. Because when this was written, the Roman Empire had, you know, a lot of the known world was under the control of the Roman Empire. Okay? So that was what it was known as, man. And that is. That is what this word is referring to in the Greek. That's what that's what the meaning of that. Okay. Now, and there's one more world. One more world. Just we need to get the understanding on. Uh, right. This is Matthew chapter twenty-four, verse three. Okay. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, "Tell us, when shall these things be?" Right. And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Now, the sign of thy coming. So when the Lord returns in these in these last days, okay, what is going to be the signs? And that's what Matthew 24 goes into. And it says, but and of the end of the world. Now, does that mean that the whole world is going to just get blown up? That's not the case because it says that the earth abideth forever. Okay. In the scriptures. And the Lord is not an author of confusion. So what does that mean? Let's go into it, man. It says... Of the world, and you see there the word there is aeon. Okay, let's hit the cracker. Say it Strong's G165 Ion. Mm -hmm. Ion. Outline of biblical usage it could be used forever, an unbroken age, perpetually, eternity, the periods of time, age, and that's what the main use of it is, man. Okay, the period of time and age. Okay, so that's why I said at the end. So if we read that in context, what was it saying, man? Let's go back. Okay, uh, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, "Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the age?" That's what it should be, man. Okay, so why is that significant? Now, uh, on the blue there, I haven't got the apocrypha, but if you go to Second Ezra chapter six and around, I think nine or the tenth verse, it says that Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, man. Okay, so we're coming to the end of Esau's age, his rulership, okay? And we're going to come into what? 
we're going to come to Jacob's rulership, man, which is going to be, which is Israel's rulership, which is going to be everlasting. Okay? It's going to be everlasting, man. It ain't going to be stopped. It's going to be perpetual. Okay? Um, and you can read that in Isaiah, man. I think it's around the 14th chapter, if I remember correctly. Um, you know, world without end. Uh, so ultimately, man, hey, at the end of the day, understanding these scriptures and going into these words is important so that you can get a fuller picture. Otherwise, you can get caught out there, um, you know, with these with these Christian mythology traps. Okay, it's, it's very easy to catch someone who's unlearned in these scriptures, so it's important to go into it, man, into words. And I hope that's been edifying. All praise to Yahweh, Shemir, Shine, Double Honest to the Apostle, and Elders, a great monster. Shalom.